Namaste, everyone. This is the 11th episode of FCNCC Presents CEO and Executive Series. This is your moderator, Parikshit Basnit, and we have a very special guest with us today. We are currently live from CanadaCover.com, so I'd like to welcome all of our viewers. Let us please welcome our guest, Mr. Tulsi, or Dr. Tulsi Daryl, I apologize there. Uh, Dr. Tulsi Daryl has been a professor at Centennial College since 2007, where he teaches marketing. His area of teaching is international marketing, marketing research and foundations of marketing and business. He has served as a coordinator for the Bachelors of Public Relations Management degree program of the School of Communications. Uh, he holds MBA and PhD in marketing, and he's a chartered marketer. He saw, serves as a council member of Centennial College, also a board member of Research, research Ethics Board of Centennial College, and he's also served as an academic governor for the Board of Governors of Centennial College. Along with that, he's you know socially involved in many different uh, you know organizations, which we will talk about in this interview. But without further ado, I would like to introduce everyone to Dr. Tulsi Darrell. Uh, Dr. Tulsi Darrell, welcome to uh, the series. We're very, very excited to have you here today. Thank, thank you and good morning to everyone. And first of all, thank you, Parishit. Uh, I'm so delighted to seeing our second generation coming forward to the leading role. And I'm happy to see you first. And yes. thank you again, inviting me for this interview. For sure. Uh, yeah, let's get started with the interview. I know a lot of people, you know, have been excited about this interview and wanted to learn more about you, more, you know, learn from you as well. Uh, and to start off, I think it would be awesome to kind of hear your st story from, you know, coming to Nepal to Canada. And also, if you can, like touching on the early struggles that you went through when you first did come to Canada. Oh, thank you again. Uh, let me tell you something about my journey to Canada. Actually, I came with my family in 2000, uh, so 23 years ago. Wow. Um, at the beginning, we came as a, a student. My wife uh, had a full scholarship to to go to Uf uh, University of Waterloo uh, doing a master degree. Uh, she had a scholarship from the World Bank. So uh, we came with her well, along with my son, who was very young at that time. Uh, and we came together and that time, uh, to be very honest, uh, I was one of the luckiest person. I didn't have any big struggle to to collect, uh, to have uh, some resources because we have a full uh, scholarship. Uh, so we had a good, uh, at that time, it was a good comfortable student life, yeah. Mm. Right, right. And, um, you know, as you know, you know, in, in our culture, usually the, the route that many people take is usually, usually go to engineer, doctor, right? But you decided to go into the field of marketing. Uh, what what made you, and also get a PhD in marketing? What well, got That's you a great point. Um, Parichit, let me tell you some of my family background. I am from the business family. My father was a businessman. We had a series of businesses. Uh, uh, and Though it was a small business, but a lot of businesses in back home. Mm -hmm. And uh, myself, um, I am uh, most, uh, I was always concerned about uh, this type of courses rather than engineering, doctor, medical science, and this type of things. I never was uh, interested and attracted. And in, in, in Nepal, there were like a certificate level and the bachelor level, which is and the master level. And then PhD, all my major was in uh, marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was uh, my journey. Then from day one, I enjoyed marketing. And, uh, you know, I did a PhD in marketing as well. So all my parties uh, since last 30, 87, you can count how many years yeah. uh, mm -hmm. before you were born. <laughs> yeah, yes. Since, yes. since then, I've been teaching only marketing. Right. Wow. Nothing more than marketing. Yeah. So that, that has been the thing that has interested you from the beginning, right? You yeah, never yeah. wanted like you, so you knew, all right, marketing. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That is that is awesome. That is very, very awesome. Uh, speaking on that, I know you are, uh, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit more about your involvement in NMA, Nepal Marketing Association. Can you please touch on that? Oh, that's a good point. Uh, you raised this. Um, first of all, let me tell you, along with, uh, I teach marketing at Centennial College for sure for the last many years. Uh, in the meantime, I'm also associated with the Canadian Marketing Association. Mm. 
which is uh, the nationwide um, uh, uh, marketing association. And I'm a brand council member as well. I have been serving that uh, for many areas uh, last year, year before, and this year also I am, uh, I have been selected for the JAWS for the every year they do marketing competition. So in along with those type of uh, knowledge and experience, what I thought, it is a good idea to have a marketing association in Nepal. Mm -hmm. Since we do not have that type of marketing association, marketing association can bring together all the marketers, academia, you know, the form from the academic field, and as well as industry, a lot of marketing uh, senior positions, people may not have that type of association. So I decided to, um, even myself, I started doing a brainstorming. And this is the good point is sometimes the pandemic, COVID pandemic, you know, uh, I never had a chance to uh, stay in Nepal for last for, for six months. Mm -hmm. uh, always I go for one, one month vacation. But in 2021, I had it, you know, we were doing an online teaching. So it was not necessary. You have to go to the college. So at that time I decided to go to Nepal for, a, you know, staying for long, uh, mm -hmm. many months. And during that period of time, I connected with so many marketing faculty members from the different university in Nepal. And then as well as marketing, senior marketing um, managers or executives and the CEOs of many high profile businesses in Nepal. And then I started sharing my ideas. Why not we have marketing association in Nepal as well? And everyone was very happy. For your information, I did almost like a, a more than 30 series of meetings I did. Oh. 30 meetings with uh, many colleges and universities and uh, the big business house, publications house. And finally, we came together to establish a marketing association in 2021, December 23rd, I guess, we formally established Marketing Association, Nepalese Marketing Association, where I am, I have been awarded as a, a lifetime, um, a lifetime honorary member for NME, as well as I'm the only one advisor for NME, and that is an international advisor as well. So that's my link with uh, NME. And this month, for your information, in the next month, August, I'm going to Nepal oh, to yeah. another, another uh, seminar in five different cities in Nepal, which is a NMA regional conference, regional mm -hmm. seminar. And I will be the key person, keynote person, main resource person to go to the five different cities. And we do... Uh, we expanding marketing activities in Nepal because a lot of people have no knowledge about what the marketing means and they think sales is marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, they think very short term business uh, goal. So that is not a marketing. Marketing brings a so long run, you know, brand image, you, you know about the brand mm -hmm. and uh, how the brand can be generated. That is very important. You have seen so many new branded uh, companies and branded products which is uh, people who want to pay any 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 amount of money for that, only for that the brand name, right? Mm -hmm. So this is why I am focusing more on uh, on those area in Nepal too. That's even more than that is uh, we, we want to do like a image generating, mm -hmm. bringing more brand image, more kind of uh, sustainable marketing activities in Nepal. Oh, perfect. Um... I, I love that. I love that, you know, you're giving back, you're, you're, you're going back and, you know, doing the speaking, getting people involved, getting people to understand that there's other industries, you know, like honestly teaching them to be better marketers, right? Because there are so many opportunities in this field. It, it's, it would be good for more Nepalese people to explore this. Speaking on your involvement, you know, just uh, in general, I know we talked a lot of, about the marketing side. I would love to hear about the social involvement, right? Because I know you're, I, I didn't, I didn't mention it because I wanted you to mention it, uh, all the social involvement that you are part of. And um, yeah, just go into that. <laughs> you know, if if this interview or you know <laughs> is a listening uh, only in the kind of GTA area, a lot of uh, people who knows me very well, they they have uh, they know very well about my involvement in many aspects, not only academic side, not only professional side, 
I am very active in the social side as well. You might have heard about me many times from your father, maybe. Uh, he's my very good friend as well. So uh, the point is, um, since um, I am a social person, first of all, and then I have spent so many time tell, I want to tell you one thing that in GTA Canada, you have seen so many organizations, right? Mm -hmm. Among those organizations, major five organizations, I'm the founding members. I'm the incorporated member. Mm, wow. I NRNA, know. I'm the incorporated member in 2007. We registered or along with five other people. Mm -hmm. Five people registered in NRNA. I am one of them. There's a, another association called Nepalese, Nepali Saite Samaj in 2004. I'm the incorporated member, which started from my home. Mm -hmm. There's another association called uh, PNCC, which is a Pashpadinath Mandir in, in Scarborough, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I'm the incorporated member for that. There's another association called uh, Concerned Nepal. You might have heard about that. Mm -hmm. Every year we do Buddha Jayanti. Have you heard about that? Yes, yes, I have. Yeah. I have. So that is, I'm an I'm a incorporated member. And since then, for the last 12 years, we're doing a Buddha Jayanti. I'm always in the front line. And the last one is, you might have heard about uh, uh, NCHC, the yes. temp, Mandir in Brampton. So those are five. I, I am, sometimes I think of myself, I'm like a crazy person, you know, I'm <laughs> busy with the community things. So yeah. my involvement is kind of that. I, I love that. And, um, you know, it's awesome to see again, right, when someone becomes successful, them giving back and them actually caring for the next people that are coming in. Uh, I know that I know the difference that you've made right with, with the events with your teaching so it's awesome to see a uh, quick question on I guess uh, branding because we quickly touched on it you know how are you I guess branding Nepal in Canada right how are you branding Nepal as a country in Canada so this is a great point let me tell you uh, the NMA when we established the first day our one major motto was let's brand Nepal that was a campaign Mm -hmm. I know this can be done by not one person or one organization. It has to go for whole entire areas. You might have heard about, you might know about. Let me tell you about when you close your eye and think about Switzerland. You've never been to Switzerland, let's say. Mm -hmm. When you close your eye and think about Switzerland, what comes to your mind? Mountains, nature. Swiss watches. So yeah, Swiss watches. Swiss cheese. Yeah, you're wearing that okay. Swiss cheese. Yes. Uh, right? Uh, the the beautiful uh, mountainous country. A lot the of flag, you, their flag. Yeah, when you close your eye, Germany, you know what comes in the, the, the auto, the best cars. Yes, when you, yes. When you think about France, you have so many of those things. Yes. Those type of positive image, it has to come to your mind. When mm -hmm. you close your eye about, let's say, Afghanistan, Syria, Sudan, Somalia, Iraq, what comes to your mind? A lot of negative things. See, so this is why the brand is a kind of image. Brand is image. So every company, they are trying their best to generate, create more brand image. Mm -hmm. Brand means trust. Right. When you trust, that is a brand. So this is why it is important for your, your community, your, your, your society and your country and your product, what you're serving, everything's supposed to have a good brand. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people say, oh, let's go to there. That is better than this one. When people say that is better means they have a brand image, the high brand image. Mm -hmm. So this is why the brand image is important. Even in Nepalese society here in Canada, uh, we are struggling for sure. We have not established that much of big brand image. But still, when we say we're from Nepal, then a lot of people have a very positive a feeling on us because they think Nepal is a beautiful country. Nepal has a, a Himalayas, you know, in Mount Everest. And, and then for sure, Buddha was born in Nepal. A lot of things people might know about that. That is a brand image. So your job is you are getting an advantage because of those image is just supporting on your uh, your journey. You mm -hmm. know, let me tell you, Parichit, I've been saying many times I share this brand image uh, the, how the brand can help to your personal life. Mm -hmm. This has happened to me. Then first questions you had said, how was your struggling life in Canada at the beginning? Tell me, I mean, let me tell you, 
I never had a struggle. You know why? It's not because I'm a very extraordinary, brilliant person. No. But I am so lucky person that I came from that part of the world where the person had a very positive feelings on that. Mm -hmm. I was in Waterloo, Kitchener. You might know Kitchener, Waterloo. Mm -hmm. One day I met a guy, a person, very senior, uh, the white man. And I told him I am from Nepal. And uh, I was a professor. I was teaching in, uh, came in Nepal at the university college. And this guy was very happy. And he asked me, do you know Ram Bahadur? Mm -hmm. Guess what? He asked me the question, do you know Ram Bahadur? Parichit. Ramba, there is so common name in <laughs> There are thousands of Ramba. I told him, okay, you know, uh, Ramba is very common, like Peter and John and uh, Paul. We have so many Ramba. And he said, Ramba Tamang. And he still said, you know, Ramba Tang, there are so many thousands of Ramba Tamang could be. Uh, can you specify? And he said, Ramba Tamang is my porter. He said, he is my porter. Then I said, oh, oh, okay. Then he told me every year he used to go to Nepal, mostly in the, in the tracking in uh, base, a base camp area, uh, mm -hmm. the Mount uh, Everest base camp or the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the other Annapurna base camp area. And Ram Bahadur Tamang used to be his porter. He always sent money to him. Whenever he goes, he is the man he rely on him and he was taking him to the, all those area for one month tracking and he comes back. And this guy has a so positive feeling. Ram Bahadur had served him so nicely and he was so much humble. And he said, he was, he never had seen any Nepalese in, in Canada. I was the first person. Mm -hmm. You know what he did? Next day, I got a call from someone, I don't know, for a, for a job. And then I thought, oh, this, I got a job. So I, uh, I, I was wearing a jeans pant and t-shirt. I thought this is a cleaning job or something. You know, who can expect that you can get a teaching job? Yeah. It was wow. First hand, you know. Wow. And then I went to the address. I didn't know. I was not too much familiar in that neighborhood even. So I took a I took a address and then started going, took the bus and then went to there. I went to Welford Laurel University inside. That was the address. And then and then the room number, I was just checking, going through that. The room number was the the marketing head, the professor of marketing department head. That was the room number. I was a little bit shocked, man. What happened? Why I'm just going here? It can be a cleaning job. It must be something else. I knocked the door inside. There were five or four faculty members who were waiting for me. Guess what? That job was for teaching job. Wow. It was not for cleaning job. Wow. So this, this is, I got that opportunity. You know why? It's not because I'm an extra brilliant from Harvard or somewhere. No. You know what? Because of the Ram Bahadur. Ram Bahadur did a so good serve. He served so much to that gentleman. And that man want to re return me back. You know? So wow. this means that the brand he means He did a so good brand. You trusted him. So this is why the brand is so important. That your background, your, your where you came from. If you have a very positive feelings, you always get support. Mm -hmm. There are so many people I know. I have, I am, a, for your information, I'm an executive vice president for Canadian Multicultural Council. Yes. In that council, I have seen so many members. They don't want to tell you where they are from. Mm -hmm. They don't like mm -hmm. their They're background. Team. Yes, because they don't see any, any brand image, positive brand image of mm -hmm. their background. Whereas we are proudly saying we from there, just because. <laughs> We're getting that brand image. See, this is a marketing. That is marketing. You create that type of brand image. You you know, you are very successful businessman as well. I, your dad told me. You know, Apple phone, the Apple company, it's a $2 trillion company. And that company doesn't have that much of a stock. They have a somewhere, the big, 
you know, warehouse, billions of years, cell phone. No. You know what they have? They have a brand. Mm -hmm. The brand value, you know how much a brand value costs. Yes, 100%. How, how people feel when they have an iPhone. Yes. It matters more than the phone itself. Yes. They so you, you yeah. better than that. Yeah. yeah Elon good. Musk bought the but uh, Twitter recently. He paid more than forty billion dollars. Yeah. It's not because they have a, something big land or big property. Nothing. The brand image. So this is why the country brand image matters. You know, Swiss watch. Let's say, what's the brand of your watch? Can you Rolex. tell? Us? Yeah. Rolex. Rolex. Okay. Listen. It's Rolex, Rado, Omega. You you might know very few of those Swiss brand. Do you know how many Swiss brand the watches are there? There are so many. So many protectively. They are, they are the selling. Head. They are selling that the, the watch. Maybe they have never heard the name, but they heard that this is from Switzerland. Mm. So where it is coming from, Switzerland. So this is why what happened, people have that type of brand image. You, when you say Japanese electronics, people like it. That's why sometimes you might have noticed those, if you buy some electronics item, let's say television or something, you know, sometimes they, they put a sticker, it says, made in Japan, assembled in Malaysia. Mm, have yes. you heard that? Yes, made seen. in Japan, assembled in Malaysia. Actually, that is coming from Malaysia. It's not from Japan. Yeah. But they want to use that name, Japan, yeah, because a, Japan has a people has a, that type of brand image. They think Japanese product is much more reliable, much more high quality. That's a brand image. We get a in, in Nepalese, Nepalese tea, let's say Nepalese tea. You say, wow, Nepalese. You, you know, Colombian coffee. People say mm -hmm. Colombian coffee. Yeah. So those are all brand image and brand German image. cars. You're saying German cars earlier. Yes. Yeah. And then brand image is not going to happen overnight. It mm -hmm. takes time. And brand image is not you, you proving you, you saying yourself, I'm, a, I'm the best. No. Other people have to recognize you. Mm -hmm. That's a brand image. Perfect. And we're trying our best to do that. I love that. Yeah, I, I try my best as well as much as I can to educate my friends, you know, give them positive perspectives. I even brought one of my American friends to Nepal and he really enjoyed the experience. Yeah. Just spreading the word because Nepal is such a special country. You know, we have we have a lot to offer. So, yeah, it's awesome to hear that from you. I would love to actually speak on that because I know you've been in marketing for so long. And I'm almost only assuming, you know, you've seen the involvement and changes of it. But before we get into that, I would like to hear from you like the difference in marketing in Nepal and Canada uh, and then I maybe after talking about like the changes you've seen in the last you know 35 years since you've been in the field uh this is a good point um Parichit um when I went to Nepal recently I I found Nepal has so much advanced marketing oh, activities wow. these days you don't have to carry cash to go to the grocery even you want to buy the street uh, vegetable on, uh, from the street Still, you don't. You may not need to carry a cash. They have a code, uh, the QR code. You just tap it. Say marketing advancement. The best part is uh, before we used to have a lot of bargaining in Nepal. You know, mm -hmm. they say twenty thousand bis hazar rupiah. Then you say dos hazar. They say no, atar hazar. You say bara hazar. So, you know, when you go to Walmart, do you do bargain? No, you don't do that. Similarly, in Nepal also, mostly I'm talking about the city area like a Kathmandu. I, I gave a one credit to Bhat uh, I don't know the owner of the, the other areas, but Bhat Bhatini has changed the marketing activities in Nepal. You know, mm -hmm. Bhat Bhatini is so comfortable when you go to Bhat Bhatini. You don't have to talk to anybody. You don't have to, you know, bargain to anyone. You just go whatever you want and get it. And if you remember, maybe um, you, your father might going to tell you when you were kids, you know, going to shopping is a kind of challenging part. You don't know whether you were cheated or you get a good deal. You don't know because it depends on how, how much you can bargain with those uh, the vendors. Mm -hmm. That was the, the struggling time at that time. But now it is so easy to go. And then people know that what the sales and what is marketing means. Sales could be short term. You cheated someone, you made a money. 
do you, is it guaranteed that that person come back again? That might gonna create the bad image, which is really bad for the branding. Yeah. Whereas marketing is you keep them happy, they are satisfied, they're paying the exact amount what you were expecting, but with the happiness. You know, you go to a restaurant, let me tell you, when you are happy, you don't bargain for the food. You still even pay more as a tips, as a other things, just because you like it. It's not a matter of money. It's a matter of service. It is a matter of the image, how they, they you expected, uh, what was your expectation, and they supported you accordingly. So that type of marketing activities has been now a very improved in Nepal. You have seen so many coffee bars there, uh, yeah. free Wi-Fi coffee uh, people, like a Starbucks type of coffee shop. Himalayan Java, so nice, better than Starbucks. Yeah, Himalayan Java, there are so many, and they allow you to sit for hours there, do your work. And the, before, it was not kind of that. They would be very rude. Because yeah. They don't know. They just want to sell it. But they don't care about your whether you return back to the same store or not. But nowadays, people say, no, we want you come again and again. When you say come again and again is that person is doing really good marketing, keeping customer happy. Yeah. And then marketing means, let me tell you one thing. Marketing doesn't mean it's a blanket. You don't have to cover to everyone. Even Walmart has not covered everyone. You know that. McDonald's has not covered everyone. You cover to only those profitable customers. Keeping co profitable customer relationship is a marketing. If you, I think you are profitable, then I want you to come to my store again and again. Mm -hmm. And what type of trick you want to use it, that trick is marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more long-term thinking than yes. in the past. Yes. It's more like, give me money or don't talk yeah. to me. Yeah. Now it's the understanding that, hey, like, you know, even if you don't give me money now, if you have a better image of me, better experience of me, then you yeah. will always come back. So, Farid said, the one more, when you it's, go to a restaurant, many times you go to a restaurant, and in the restaurant, sometimes you are very happy and you want to repeatedly go there. Sometimes you're not. Not only the product, the food is good. No, the environment is not good. Serving person is, attitude is the problem. There could be so many reasons. So marketing means combine all together and make your customer, your targeted people happy. Yeah. It's your product, it's your service, it's your location, it's your, your any kind of other activities. So that is important for that. Yeah, I think Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, I mean, two of the richest people in the world, the biggest company, they say they all focus on the customers. That's all they do is focus on the customers because the customers is who pays them not the competitors. That's that's why you, you bought the name. Like I was just going to go to that. Ellen Marx, Jeff Berger, and then uh, uh, Bhadbadin, the owner mm. in Nepal. These people didn't do anything new. Yeah. Just change the attitude, change the behavior, change the practicing of marketing. Yes. You know, Amazon doesn't have any big showroom in downtown area somewhere in the attractive area, like unlike Walmart. You don't see but they are the biggest business, you know, the retail industry in the world. Mm -hmm. They have, they, they, those, those two people like uh, Alan Marks and Jay Perger, those people are the, the most richest person, richest people in the world, just yeah. because they practice marketing a different way than the traditional method, okay? Yeah. So this is why the customer is so important. Your main goal should be sustained for long run and keep your brand image high. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. I actually quick point on that before we move, you know, we wrap it up and I ask you some final questions um, to like to the opposite point of that. One time I had a very bad experience at a restaurant. Not only will I not go back now, I'm telling all of my friends, hey, I didn't like this place. And now they're not going to go. Now, next time someone mentions that restaurant to them, they're going to be like, hey, my friend went. They, you know, they didn't have good experience. So, you know, it's it's like a butterfly effect of just you know a lot of negativity if, if you're not focusing on marketing and your brand image and the experience that you give your customers so the, i just thought of that as you mentioned that as well um but yeah to wrap up uh i guess the last questions would be you know what advice would you have to those you know newcomers uh from nepal that are coming to canada who are struggling to you know get into the field that they studied in nepal 
uh, basically in the business area or any any area in general you know just general advice for those uh, that uh, are the i think uh, parichit you 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 have practice and you are one of the successful person your dad several times have mentioned me i know the point is uh, being a uh, self employed is much more better mm. if you have that type of challenging that type of your your discipline and a kind of knowledge on that being a self employed is really good to progress faster than working for someone let's say my job is i'm a teacher i'm a professor don't expect i'm going to make a lot of money mm. i might have a uh, thousands of students but i am not counting with the money whereas the best part is in from nepal when people are coming here they need to uh, first of all they need to know about the environment they should not jump in immediately uh, to take a big risk part and uh, they need to know the environment of a canadian uh, business environment being a um, uh, do uh, uh, self employed is much more better than working for someone but uh, working for someone is one of the easiest part is you don't have to worry too much about the things because self employed is a high risk high gain kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, your your activities uh, the, the chances is for sure the success rate is very high but at the same time there is a challenges as well so so this is why i i normally suggest to all the newcomers and uh, don't just think that you have a very big experience and back home doesn't guarantee that you will be applying the same way and let me tell you that you you used to drive in kathmandu valley you have a nice car or motorcycle in there i that doesn't guarantee that you can drive in a 401 here because mm, i like that yeah right you, I, i'm a good driver doesn't mean you can drive here you got to learn here you go, you have to practice here uh, most probably you may not be allowed even uh, you know legally uh, to do this this is why important for the engineers for the doctors for any kind of medical activities people they must have be uh, important to know about uh, make sure you learn something here in this area this you know environment after that you you better start doing your business but for sure uh, get a lot of advice and the advice doesn't mean that your seniors who doesn't know about the business yeah. don't take advice from that the take a advice from the right person and it might going to help so i think that is my advice to the newcomers I think that is perfect advice, Dr. Tulsi. There, thank you so much again for your time today. For you know, doing this interview with us, I really enjoyed uh, doing this interview. I learned, I learned a lot as well, and I'm excited to you know uh, connect with you. Just you know, stay in touch with you. Hopefully, we can grab lunch or coffee one day. Sure, you know, sure, time. sure. For sure, <laughs> I'm eager to seeing you. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Yes, uh, this has been the 11th interview of FCNCC's uh, CEO and interview series with, with Dr. Tulsiral. And before we go, any any last final thoughts? Oh, this is Dr. good. Even I'm a part of this. Um, BJ G has uh, uh, nominated me for this uh, advisory as well, yes. and uh, I would be happy to share my expertise to the newcomers and uh, new startup business like yours. and many others i've been i've been giving a lot of those type of marketing tips to many people uh, individually and group wise uh, from day one uh, this is why feel free if anybody needs any marketing tips or marketing help uh, normally i don't charge uh, that is not my area i don't i uh, if it's the big business company like a bankers and other for sure but normally for my nepalese community i never and i will be happy to I share my expertise and insights related to the business area marketing area I will be happy to share for that thank you thank you so much thank you dr tulsiara thank, thank you, you so much